twisted like knots on the fingers. Jewels cleaving skin between. The moon rattles breath. like a fragment of Andy. Angry candy. Angry candy. That's a quote from E.E. Cummings. Ah. Uh, the Cambridge ladies live on furnished souls. And the picture is uh, Louise Brooks, the actress from the 20s, who I sort of regard as my patron saint. Your Cadillac breeds 400 horses over blue lines. You are going to Reseda to make love to a model from Ohio whose real name you don't know. You spin like the Cadillac was overturning down a cliff on television. So you're a poet from way back then. This is from way action. back, from the fifth century <laughs> BC. I started out. I you're Jack Kerouac. Uh, no, I'm afraid not. <laughs> Jack Kerouac, my ass. Oh, you're not a fan of Jacks? Oh, not. No, no. no. If you're not. No, no, the, the beat thing. The beat thing is always sort of left me bewildered. It's just you know. Ooh, white guys. They're drunk. Cool. And the radio is on, and the radio man is speaking, and the radio man says women were a curse. So men go Paramount Studios. But you know something about beat poetry? I mean, we can, like, turn it all around, you know? Like, Dolly do some poetry, and we, like, do some beats. How about that? There you go. There can you we go. do that? You want to yeah. do it right now? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you want a jungle beat? The fish is in the sky, a singing and a singing. Oh, people. Dick, come on. Oh, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Call Dr. Dick. Call Dr. Dick. It is 5 a.m. And you are listening to Los Angeles. It is 5 a.m. Did you design it as a spoken word project, or is it just accident the way it came it's, out? It's, it's entirely an accident. I mean, it's, I think, the only idea that was present before Soul Coughing sort of started its evolution was, um, was that it was going to be funky. But beyond that, it was just sort of anything goes. And just over time, it's become, you know, very closely related to who we are as people and how those particular personalities interact. We more maybe try and relate to like the lower part of the body, you know, like have people shake their booty and uh, dance and like just feel good, you know, like we, we're trying to talk to, you know, like to the body, like yeah. physical, physical contact. The idea is sort of to get the room into a trance and, uh, you know, I mean, with groove music, there's a real spiritual aspect, this sort of, you know, um, mental and physical interaction thing going on. And um, Sebastian, our bass player, um, is always talking about connecting with something larger and uplifting the room. And that's really what dance music is about. And that's why we're doing that as opposed to something that's more, um, more based in the melody or based in something more cerebral, for lack of a better word. element of trance is so important to you musically, what role do the words actually play? Do they have to mean anything? Well, they, they, just, I mean, the, the nature of language is that each word evokes such a tremendous amount of things for specific people. Um, and what these words are about, more than getting across a narrative or expressing an idea, um, sometimes, is just getting the rhythmic and musical quality of a word into people's minds so it just sort of loops over and over again and whatever it means to them comes to the front of their mind. I mean, a lot of what I was listening to when I started <coughs> writing like this was like dance music where, you know, it's just I love you baby over and over and over and over again. And I was like, damn, man, what if you did that with a word that was just like so mundane or so, um, 
you know, so unusual to that medium, you know, what would come up in people's minds. The ex post facto waiting for the lawyer to call, post facto waiting for the lawyer to call, post facto, ex post facto. The water, uh, the wally about the water, the wally about the water. As much as we're using all these multi-syllabic words and talking bullshit, um, you know, it's we're in a f***ing band, man. I mean, there's nothing serious about it. You get the ankles and I'll get the wrist. You get the ankles and I'll get the wrist. You get the ankles and I'll get the wrists. You come down to this. I actually, I get a lot of great lyrics not understanding other people's lyrics. Um, I'm not going to reveal those, but... Um, you know, you'll like hear a record and you'll be like, man, that line was so dope. And then you listen to it again and you're like, oh, uh, he's not <laughs> yeah. really saying that at all, is he? So. Catch your toothpick stuck in the ground. Tiny one more to mow me down. There are times when just uh, you get a reaction from an audience. Yeah. Um, and it's not even so much a reaction. It's just like you're there and they're there, and the music is sort of with everybody. And it really doesn't matter whether it's coming out of you or coming out of them or who's reacting to what. It's yeah. just like this moment where the room gets lifted. Yeah, what's going on in the room? It's kind yeah. of become to be like everybody's into it, and we're into what's going on, and it's just become to be like yeah. this. The oneness? The oneness. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Come on, it's always it always sounds so much more new age than we intended to be. Yeah. You are listening. You are.